Hello and welcome to episode 26 of E30 M3 Recreation. In this longer than normal instalment we will show you the complete process of building a carbon fibre roof which was the best part of two months work and by the end the car will have the roof fully installed. Remember guys, if you want to look back on all the work carried out on this car so far, the past 25 episodes can be found in the car lube playlists. Please don't forget to give this episode a like and consider subscribing. Now over to Spencer from BMP Conversions. As you can see, the, the roof mould uh, is now made and the, the outer skin has actually been made to the thickness of what we needed. The wood support is now being put on by Ray. Ray is now fixing those on. so. The reason we have to do these is so the, the mould can be stored nicely. Um, when you turn this mould upside down, uh, which is the right way up, this then stands on the woodwork and the woodwork then supports the mould all the way from one side to the other, stopping the mould from warping and going out of shape. And then the mould will need to flip upside down, strip the original roof out, uh, take the flanges off and then buff and polish the internal area inside the mould and we can start looking at actually laying up a carbon fiber roof skin. So this is the, the roof mold. Now that uh, the roof itself has been removed out of the, the mold. So this is the top side of the actual uh, mold that we'll be making the carbon fiber roofs from. As you can see, there's a little bit of paint pulled off the uh, steel roof, which I, I obviously had to send the steel roof off for painting. Where they've painted it, the paint hadn't adhered to the, the, roof, the roof skin very well so what actually happened when we removed the roof skin from the actual mould as you can see it's all freshly trimmed so we trimmed it today when it was removed from the mould it left traces of the, the paint behind so all we've got to do is go around and pick all the paint off on the mould itself and then we'll be able to wet flat this area you can see how good the reflection is in the gel coat but there is slight peel to it so We'll wet flat the whole item and then that'll give us a mirror finish uh, of the actual roof skin part. And that will then uh, be an absolute perfect skin once it uh, is taken out of the, the mould. So uh, obviously the flange area, the flange area is always dull uh, so that we can stick our tack tape to that. And then the vac bag and uh, We'll be making roof skins in resin infusion very soon. what we have here going on is carbon fiber infusion and as you can see the feed resin is just there that's the feed pot now this vacuum pump and this little catch chamber has pulled the vacuum on the entire bag and what that's done is that's pulled all the carbon right down into every single crevice so as you pull a vacuum on the bag it pulls the carbon around all the different contours of the shape so that the carbon is against the very front edge of the mold so as you can see all these different shapes here if we didn't do that we'd end up with really thick resin on the very front face and the carbon weave would be quite deep into the resin so we use a vac bag to pull the carbon against the front face we pull an entire vacuum on the actual mould itself and then what we do is we release the resin and allow the vac pump to drag the resin into the part the resin then gets pulled through the part and head down towards 
the uh, outlet, which is the catch pot. That catch pot basically just picks up any resin which is uh, coming out of the part whilst it's working its way round. So as you can see, this area is gonna meet that, that pipe first before we do all the way around the back. And, uh, and then once, once that meets that part, it will get thrown out into the catch pot. The catch pot will just catch it instead of being dragged into the pump itself. So uh, as you see, the carbon's now getting infused with resin. The little air bubbles are working their way through the part. If we go back into the very back of the part, that is pure resin, no air bubbles whatsoever. So that just wets the carbon, works its way through the part and makes a perfect surface finish. So you can see now that the resin has now literally reached its way all the way around the line in, which is, this is the spiral tube. That spiral tube is feeding resin all the way around and wetting the carbon cloth material up as it goes. So that is carbon fibre infusion of a BMW E30 roof skin. We do these in site view carbon and we do these in gel coat ready to paint. And uh, yeah, they, uh, they're, they're very, very nice as well because this particular roof has got a V pattern in the carbon. So all the way down the, the weave, we've got a carbon V pattern. Quite hard to tell in there, but we've got the V pattern in the weave all the way down the roof. And that's slap bang straight down the middle of the roof. So now we just wait for the remainders of the bubbles to be pulled through. As you can see, the bubbles are getting pulled through the pipe. That's the remainders of the air. Obviously it's throwing out some resin into the pot. But we just keep pulling it through until all the bubbles are gone in the actual surface of the part. And then that is a perfect infusion. Once that stops uh, creating air bubbles, once the air bubbles stop, we know we've got a solid infusion just with resin. The next process, what we've done is we've masked off the car. And um, the reason I've took, taken this down to bare metal is that the glue that we're going to use, if you see the permabond um, glue that we're going to use around here, that will actually, if I leave paint on, it will heat the paint up and go sticky and uh, that will destroy the paint and, um, and it won't actually stick to the metal. So what we do is we remove uh, all the paint where the uh, glue is going to be sat from here down and then same with the inner support bar. Yeah, so as you can see all the way around, everywhere the carbon fibre roof is going to be stuck is uh, bare metal. What we'll do now is completely cover all this bare metal with permabond glue. Um, that will allow the roof not to rust because we're going to completely cover the entire surface. Uh, I would always sort of you know, gun wash it down, make sure the panel's greased, uh, degreased completely. And, uh, and then with the internal side of the roof itself, the carbon fibre roof, what you will see is... Um, we will scratch the inside of the carbon and then clean the carbon uh, down with uh, acetone, blow it off, make sure there's no dust particles whatsoever, and, uh, and then go ahead and start to apply the glue onto this met metal work. Now, we apply the glue around the edge. I don't know if you can see this very well, but um, so the glue comes off the roof and around the edge and the roof actually hooks, the carbon roof actually hooks around this area. So this has to be bare metal as well, all the way around the window hole. Once we've applied the glue, uh, making sure that there is no metal in sight anymore, it's just a case of lifting the roof on and clamping the roof down. The next thing I'm going to do before I actually apply the roof to this car is you can see so the, the inner support, which is what I was talking about earlier, 
and the outer skin, which is that edge there, I'm going to pump lots of glue in that area all the way along. So that then joins these two areas together. You can see that from factory, some of the roof was done and that just stops them from flapping and, uh, and knocking together. So if you glue those, those two bits together, pump lots of glue in there, that actually helps the roof with rigidity um, and the inner supports that makes them stronger. So I'm going to pump lots of glue in these areas all the way down before we actually put the glue on the outside of the car. Now the glue that we use is a special glue. This is the applicator. Now this is a carbon fiber to steel adhesive. What this does is this is a slow drying glue. This is tried and tested, this is what we use. You have to buy the nozzles to go with it, which, because uh, it's a two-part glue, the nozzles mix, mix the glue um, as you go. What I would do is I would do probably a 50 millimeter blob of glue on cardboard, uh, pump it out a few times before you go ahead to use it. That just means that the mixture which is coming down the tube is properly mixed when you come to use the first lot of glue. So I'm going to lay the roof skin onto the car and demonstrate where we've cut it and, uh, and why we've cut it where we have. Uh, this, this particular roof is going to have uh, white stripes like an E90 M3. This area of the roof will be white striped all the way down and then showing carbon weave from centre to centre. So, um, from side to side. So, uh, yeah, that's going to look very nice. But because we're having a white stripe along the roof from front to back, we're able to blend, fill away the lip of the carbon, which means that the roof skin can be glued straight over top of the original steel part and, uh, and blend filled in this area. So you won't actually know that the roof skin's been applied uh, all you'll see is the centre of the roof in carbon. So this is the inside of a carbon roof and as you can see all the way around the edge is uh, a dull area and that dull area is the same thickness as the steel shiny surface that we've uncovered. So what we've done is we've sanded the inside of the roof skin all the way around to uh, basically create a key so that the glue will adhere to the, the carbon fibre perfectly. So the roof skin's now on the car. As you can see, what we've done is we've trimmed the roof skin. In the gutter itself, you have the very lower angle of the gutter, then a ridge, and then you have a secondary ridge where the roof skin turns, starts to go sort of onto the flat area of the roof itself. We've measured roughly sort of 15, 20 mil up from that ridge, and we've glue we're gonna we, we've cut our carbon roof at that point so that that gives us an area all the way around the roof itself to be able to fill off from the roof skin to the steel to create a perfect edge so there isn't a lip there to see once the roof's bonded on so we're going to lose the lip of the roof thickness with body filler in those areas feathering it out the carbon fibre guy who's helping me apply this roof onto the car itself has said to me that we'd probably be better using some of the glue that we're going to fix the roof on with um, to bridge this gap between the roof and the steel roof because that actually won't sink over time or crack. So what we may do is actually go around with the, the glue we apply the roof with and bridge that off, then sand that afterwards. Given that we're going to be painting this area of the roof skin itself it doesn't matter whether we scuff the surface of the roof while we sand and then we're going to prime this area and the painter can then go ahead and paint this area but um, looking at the front of the roof again we followed the contour of this ridge all right so we've gone 15 20 mil back followed the contour of that ridge and that allows us just to feather the filler off in this area we leave the front lip so this very front lip we leave that on and that lip is a location lip basically that allows us to make sure that the roof skin is square that slides up against that area there and the roof skin is square against that cut the roof skin just in here you can see it's bare metal there so we're going to glue this entire surface and then the window seal will just fit 
like normal wood. The next stage is applying the glue and, uh, and getting the roof on in position. So when we put the roof on itself, it sort of squashes a layer of glue out of the side, either side, and, um, and that then means that the, the bare metal isn't going to rust. So this area here isn't where the carbon fibre roof is going. The carbon fibre roof is up here. As you may see, the inner support bar is fully glued as well. What we've done is we've actually added a piece of carbon fibre. We glued in to this position. You can see the carbon fibre is six mil thick. Um, that is actually uh, Soric in between two sheets of carbon. Uh, we've glued that on the internal structure. So there's the, the channel either side, the U-shape, we filled full of VM100 right across the roof and then glued this piece down, cramping it in the middle and at the sides. So it follows the contour of the inner support bar. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna lift the roof skin on and uh, put it in position, clamp it down, and then we have to wipe off all the excess glue that bulges out from the outside and the inside of the car. So we've lifted on the carbon fiber roof. Obviously when you do this, so what we've done is we've used a fiberglass roof and we've cut the fiberglass middle out of the roof and just used that as a clamping area. That that's basically spreads the load. If you can imagine, if you were to over tighten these clamps, you'd pull the carbon down wavy all the way on the roof. So you want to try and spread the load as evenly as possible. And, uh, and by doing that, what we do is we, we add these bits of tiny little bits of wood and we don't actually do the clamps up that tight. We do them just enough just to hold that wood in place. So the load is spread evenly throughout the whole entire carbon roof rather than just um, pressurizing it down in one area and, uh, and actually causing the roof to, to ripple and warp. We've cleaned off the glue and just like I said, we've left extra glue on the actual edge of the roof. So where the, the roof skin stops, you can see where the roof skin, roof skin stops. This is like a mountain of glue between the carbon and the steel. And what that will allow me to do is to sand that down now, once the roof's gone, gone off. Um, it will need the tiniest little bit of filler in areas, but that glue is gonna be a lot harder than body filler, so that will not sink. Um, you won't end up with any uh, low areas after, you know, after time. So you can see the carbon is fully glued down all the way around the roof. The inner support is there, stop the roof from flapping. And all the strength is still in the roof as if it was from factory. So we haven't weakened this car in any way, shape or form. So yeah, once this is uh, cured off, this is going to take about three days to, before we can actually remove the clamps themselves and uh, yeah we can then start fitting the rear window frame and the that will be the the final touches of the m3 body conversion done to this car once the rear window frame is fitted the uh, the car will look like a complete m3 um, as you can see the roof now is is actually glued down fixed this is the reflection you can see of the workshop in the actual roof you can see how good the finish the surface finishes on the carbon um, it is literally a mirror finish on the uh, carbon itself. So you can see the V pattern all the way down the centre of this roof. We decided to go for a V pattern because uh, all supercars have V pattern bonnets and uh, uh, it's just a nice little touch I think. Uh, makes, uh, makes the roof stand out. So you can see the V pattern very well in the image there all the way along. So today what we've done is uh, we've been trimming the rear window frame c pillar kit which is this is a carbon fiber part and uh, this is uh, going white so what we're doing with this car is the uh, rear m3 boot lid spoiler the evo sport one will have a carbon fiber gurney flap then the spoiler itself will be uh, it is made out of solid carbon but that will be painted white carbon the boot lid i believe the customer wants in site view carbon same as the roof then the C-pillar, along with the rear quarters, will be painted white. So all this has been primed, uh, ready for paint. The roof skin itself is going to be left in sight view carbon. So this is yet to be lacquered uh, as of yet. So we've still got to lacquer the roof. But that's left for the painter to do. But you can see how nice the finish of the roof is um, just from the actual uh, glossy yeah, resin 
uh, from the mould. So the roof is really, really substantial as well. You can't hardly flex the roof if we press on it. I mean, this roof is two and a half mil thick carbon, solid carbon. There's no fiberglass inside it like a lot of companies do. This is a pure carbon fiber roof. We are running a white strip of paint on both sides of the roof from front to back um, of the carbon roof along with the painting the C-pillar to make the roof look like an E90 M3 roof. So as you can see, the, the roof itself is just beautiful. Really, really pleased with the way that this roof has come out. So what we're gonna do is um, sand this down and lose this edge now. Apply a small amount of filler in this area. Key this area up along here and then prime this area. This car, once the window frame is fitted, will be off back to the painters. The painter has then got to do the C-pillar in white, the stripes down the roof in white on either side, and lacquer the entire roof, including the carbon fibre. And the final assembly on the bodywork can happen. The bolt-in roll cage will go in, and also front and rear bumpers, side skirts, uh, all the front wings, bonnet, um, every single other panel that is missing off this car to make this car complete. As I, as I said before, this is a carbon fibre window frame. As you can see inside there, the entire piece is carbon fibre. You can see all the internal structures are there as well. So these do take a considerable, a considerable amount of uh, adjustment, but once you get them fit and right, they really do as fit as good as an original one. They are quite tight to fit on the car, but it's just the way that BMW designed them and, and made those parts. They are literally just a a, a loop on and uh, a grip over on the original car so it's just a window frame extension there is a uh, an under parcel shelf extension to put in and uh, that is the last part of the the conversion to the body work that we have to do is um, you can see underneath here there is a gap and the under parcel shelf extension glues to the underside of the original parcel shelf which is the gutter itself and it extends out to the new gutter. That then makes this area substantially strong. Um, it will not curve, move. You can slam the boot on it and uh, and the car you know, won't break like fiberglass ones will. You can then bond an original glass windscreen in this hall. And the glass windscreen, given that it's bonded top and bottom and all the way around the sides, that then holds the upper parcel shelf carbon part even more rigid. So this car, by the time it's fully glued and bolted together, you won't actually know the difference between an original metal part and the carbon part we make. All right, so thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you do, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and uh, hit the notifications. Thank you, bye. Hello and welcome to another episode of Car Loop. In this episode, we've got quite an interesting touring car inspired. E36 BMW M3.